let me do the introduction word. Uh, of course, I'm very, very happy to see everyone who joined. Welcome again. Uh, one more week in a row. You are uh, so kind to join us and dedicate your time to this uh, series of pre-conference uh, webinars where we are discussing the hot topics of our profession. Uh, so I, I will remind uh, any, uh, any, anyone who joins us probably for the first time, this is a series of pre-conference webinars where we're trying to put in common our ideas in preparation of the law firm management conference that is annually held in Moscow. And this year, the topic of the conference was chosen as health of the law firm. And uh, myself, uh, my name is Zoya Ilienka. I am a partner of a Spanish law firm based in Barcelona, uh, together with uh, Vlad uh, Vladislav Zabrodin. We are co-chairing this conference. So today we're gathered here to talk about a very interesting a topic, which is uh, which was called lessons uh, of the pandemic. Let's see what lessons we've learned. Are we immune now? Let's discuss what are the conclusions, both on a personal level and on the professional level that we've made. And probably uh, some of you would like to actually give us the examples of actual decisions or uh, things you've put into practice after making these pandemic conclusions. So today's topic will be moderated by uh, Vladislav Zabrodin and I will pass the word to him who will kindly introduce all the speakers. Thank you, thank you very much, Zoya. And uh, yeah, I think that it's a quite an interesting time, especially taking into consideration that we're facing the second wave. And probably some of us already did see this uh, second wave in their kind of, you know, day-to-day -day life. Uh, the main uh, idea of this particular uh, discussion, and, you know, frankly speaking, I believe we all share this experience. We all faced uh, quite a number of very different, you know, situations and lessons uh, during last couple of months. And obviously, you know, the most uh, kind of, you know, standard one that a lot of us start working remotely and that's a difference uh, from our life before. And I think that would be a difference uh, with our life in future. However, uh, I believe that, you know, taking into consideration that the remote work is kind of the most standard uh, lesson and challenge uh, we experience, this is probably not the most complicated one. Uh, we actually have an absolutely fabulous group of, uh, not speakers, I wouldn't put it this as speakers, I would put this as the people who have their own lessons in their own lives and the lives of their firms. And uh, we tried our best not to kind of, you know, to, to have the same lesson, but even if the lessons in some cases would be similar to each other, they would be still uh, different from the point of view of the outcome of this lesson and the results that you know, the firms decided to uh, kind of implement in their day-to-day -day practice. Uh, so our task today is just to share this in a very brief form, the lesson, and, you know, to probably these lessons would be valid for us during our next couple of, you know, months. I hope that uh, vaccine would be finally created, and I'm not offering Russian vaccine at the moment, but I'm sure that, you know, some vaccine will be definitely in place, and I'm sure that, you know, in very short period of time, we'll just forget about this absolutely tremendously difficult and different time of our lives. However, in many cases, we will be able to remind and to remember them. And I would say that some of the lessons we have now would be actually a significant influence of our firm's operations in the future. I would like to start with Norm Clark. Norm is a business advisor and counselor to the law profession for decades and decades, and he's very well known in his profession. He's operating from Florida, but he's also uh, working with companies all around the world. And Norm's lessons is learning how to expect unexpected. Please, Norm. Thank you, Vlad. Thank you very much. Uh, let me put just a few slides up during my comments. One of the lessons that our clients, most of whom are law firms, that are small or mid-sized are attempting to learn, and some of them have learned it quite well, is the interesting skill of expecting the unexpected. Uh, how to anticipate changes that may be taking place that we might not have considered ever before. Now, an interesting thing, 
we have been hearing from some of our law firm clients that 2020 has actually been, to quote one of our clients, one of our best years ever. This quotation comes from the managing partner of a mid-sized firm in Mexico, a country that's been hit very hard, both in terms of public health and the economy by the pandemic. And several other of our clients have said similar things. And when they talk about this being one of the best years ever, and we ask why, they say things like, well, we have a serious and flexible business plan. We spend a lot of time anticipating what we will need to do to meet our objectives. Another firm said, we have ongoing attention to the management of working capital and cash flow. This is something that is in the DNA of our firm. We watch cash flow very carefully. We manage accounts receivable and unbuild work in progress very closely. And that enables us to make adjustments as necessary with some of our clients who might be having difficulty. And with respect to the clients, another firm told us that we have been relatively successful this year because we're getting closer to our clients. We're actually spending more time talking with them about their businesses and their business challenges. And this enables us to anticipate much better the effects that it might have on our firm. So to be ready to expect the unexpected, there are really four elements that we've seen in this new way of anticipating the impact on your practice. Number one, the need for information. We can no longer do business plans based on aspirations or rather vague goals that are off in the future. Getting good information about what's going on, particularly in the business sectors represented by the clients. And the information needs to come from reliable sources, from scientists rather than politicians, from economists, anticipating what is likely going to happen in the next quarter, two quarters from now, and even next year. Secondly, we're seeing what I call what if planning or contingency planning. Investing the time to ask ourselves, if this happens, if for example, we don't get a vaccine until the middle of 2021, what impact could that possibly have on our firm? What if some of our major clients begin to slide into bankruptcy or restructuring? What impact will that have on our firm? And what would we need to do to adjust to that? Establishing the storm warnings. What are the things that we should be looking for? What are the measurements that we should watch that'll indicate that one of these things that we have planned for, but hope will never happen, is actually likely to be there on the horizon? And finally, exercise. This is not running to the gym if it's open or running outside, but exercising the plan, taking some time once a year or once every 18 months to work through the plan in, an, in a case study type of situation and make sure that it actually works well. But above all of this, I think it's important to recognize that the best solution for expecting the unexpected is very firm specific. There are some best practices and best principles, but there's no universal solution. You know best where you need to go and how to get there. And a flexible approach informed by reliable data and reliable input from your clients can help you expect what is unexpected for your firm. Vlad, back to you. Thank you, thank you, Norm. I think it's like a key, key keynote speaker now. <laughs> Uh, so I think it's extremely important. And what's also interesting that finally lawyers starts, you know, considering uh, our profession as business. That's a bit surprising for me. But I understand that maybe one of the major outcomes of this, uh, of this experience in this kind of time. The next speaker is Timur Bondarev uh, from Artsengir. Artsengir, uh, a very well-known Ukrainian firm. And I'm happy that Timur is the person who joined us from, from Kiev. Hi Vlad and thank you. Thank you for having me here. 
uh, great, great seeing you all. And, uh, you know, it's, it's normally in this time of the year, we, we meet each other somewhere at IBA events and shake hands and give hugs to each other. Unfortunately, we have to miss this year, but, but perhaps latest next year, we'll do the best to, to, to say hello in person. Anyway, so the topic uh, which we are discussing now is, is very interesting because, and, and obviously I'm, I'm sure that each of you uh, has spent already hours uh, during discussions with your partners, with your colleagues all over the world in uh, similar webinars with regard to what's happening with the world, what will happen tomorrow and whether, whether legal business will survive. So obviously the respective discussions have started even, even before the COVID. Uh, and uh, I think that legal tech was, was a big trigger for, for us starting to rethink in legal business in, in a very uh, usual conservative way how it was. But the pandemic has really triggered a lot of changes. And uh, um, obviously um, I personally consider it as a very nice uh, test for, for, for us uh, with regard to whether, whether we are resilient or not. And I think based on what I see on the Ukrainian market, obviously I can talk only about Ukrainian market. Uh, I think that <clears throat> it was a very interesting exercise for us to understand that legal business can, can function a bit, bit different manner in comparison to what we got used to. So obviously we all know that legal business has always been blamed for being very conservative uh, for some reasons in terms of how we, how we maintain our office space, how we, uh, <clears throat> how we do our business, business, etc. And uh, COVID has uh, just brought us to the situation that we cannot do it in, in a way how it was before. Uh, some law firms adopted very, very rapidly. Some law firms uh, have been struggling quite, quite severely. And um, interesting now that <clears throat> The more I see that, the more I understand that uh, this, this was a really very good opportunity for us to understand that, you know, we, we don't really, we don't really, on one hand, uh, need offices in a way how it was before. On the other hand, uh, we obviously have to keep them. And um, you obviously know that, that this discussion is also ongoing that whether you generally the businesses will, will survive and whether we will need all these negotiation uh, conference rooms. We understood, for instance, that um, this situation will help us to we stick to offices, but we understand that we'll be able just to double or even to triple our, 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 our staff without expanding our office spaces because we understand that people can perfectly work outside of their homes and they really enjoy it and they actually give them a lot of comfort for those obviously who have these, you know, working conditions. We understand that people can be much more available, can, people can be much more accessible and they can be accessible 24-7 even by our clients, what the clients appreciate very much. So just to keep the long story short, I, I know that I'm sort of running of time. I, I per personally consider this situation as, as a very big challenge on one hand. On the other hand, it's a very, very big trigger, a very big push for us to make uh, ourselves better. And I personally think that this year was uh, very much uh, helping us and still helps us to, to become better and to become more competitive. And um, I think that uh, that uh, it will it will it will go in, in this direction, and uh, we will we will find ourselves in a very very different, much better, much positive shape than before. Vlad. Thank you, Timur. Thank you, Timur. And I think it's extremely important that law firms can change themselves in very kind of efficient way, and can actually react towards you know the market environment. I believe that that's probably you know not just you know today's change that's the change for the future as well uh, our next speaker is Evgeny Zilin um, attorney in law from uh, Chorus Gambia that's a Swiss uh, company uh, but Evgeny is well known as a Russian lawyer and his uh, his lesson is connected with the work and life balance so Evgeny how is your balance today yes hello Vlad uh, hello everyone uh, I hope you can hear me well. I'm actually driving from Zurich to Geneva, uh, which from the life balance sounds quite not bad, but I'm driving for work for a very important money laundering case. So I hope you can excuse the noise in my car. So um, I can tell you just a few things. Uh, never before in my life have I been happier than this year. I think it's a great opportunity for all of us to rethink uh, whether we spend uh, too many hours for work and too, too few hours for life. 
And, and this crisis, you know, this lockdown, the two months that we were sitting uh, together with our families at home, I enjoyed them, frankly. Uh, uh, the first few days, I was afraid that, well, now we will not be getting any work. But then it started to, to, to pump in because people, uh, when the crisis comes, they need lawyers. So I think that we lawyers are in a, uh, in a very good position uh, to, to manage the cases, not being physically present in the office, not necessarily being there uh, 12 hours, 14 hours a day. And that's not only true for partners, that's also true for lawyers, for associates. So I can tell you my associates are happy not being required to visit the office now mandatorily. They only go there where they need. And I, I'm, you know, I, I live in Switzerland since years, and I manage the Moscow office remotely. Now I'm happy to manage the Zurich office remotely, also from one of the Zurich hills in the area, because uh, people, uh, they just do what they, what they need. And clients, of course, they enjoy it, because they can call you anytime, they will expect you to reply anytime, because they know you are sitting in your gadgets, you're sitting in your mail, and, and then you cannot miss to reply. Um, one more thing which I want to touch, and, and that is more philosophical. I mean, this crisis, this, this pandemic, is certainly a test for humanity, for the whole mankind, and that's no bullshit. I mean, whoever uh, shows solidarity, tolerance, patience, and flexibility, and first of all, humanity, will benefit from this crisis, that's for sure. But we lawyers, of course, uh, we have here an ethical conflict because our clients, they're like camels. You can only milk them when they stand on their knees. So now the crisis uh, has triggered many clients to stand back on their knees. So that's now a very important time for us lawyers to milk the clients. So uh, I don't have a big, uh, bad feeling about the current times. I think it will continue until at least mid of next year. And probably uh, the shifts that have emerged, they will stay. I mean, what Timur just said, we don't really need such big offices for everyone to have its working space. It can be reduced to maybe half of, of the size. And there could be also different options for the IT, but that's another story. So I think that there will be some, some special webinar devoted to the IT, and I would be happy to, to listen and to learn uh, what, what the colleagues have done in the world in this area. So that's my lesson. More life, uh, less work, but uh, in a sense that you have less meetings, uh, you filter out the important things and, and, and you're really not uh, losing your time for less important things. And, and, and at the end of the day, it's your families, it's your life that counts. And uh, the clients, they, as soon as they stand up from their knees, they're gone. So that's my Thank lessons from the pandemic so far. Thank you, Evgeny. It sounds like, you know, uh, there are three lessons actually. Lawyers can be happy, that's already surprising. Then the happiness brings us to philosophical uh, kind of thoughts. That's a bit disturbing. And then of course the philosophical thoughts will make us to change the world. And that's a good one, hopefully, you know, uh, at least you know from the long-term perspective. Our next speaker is uh, uh, Zoya Ilyenka and she has a very challenging, uh, challenging task. Less, less is more and more for less. So Zoe, what exactly do you mean by this? I'm so happy I'm here to continue this positive note of uh, Evgeny. Uh, well, actually, uh, my lesson, which I resumed as uh, less is more or more for less is possible, could be presented by any one of you as simply as by answering the following question. How many times uh, all of you self-sabotaged your business development plans by thinking or saying something like, in order to take the next step or in order to grow my business, I need to do this or that or travel there or meet this person, but I don't have budget for it. So how many times the budget and thinking in traditional ways stopped you, prevented you from growing your business? How many times you postponed certain business development actions because your firm didn't have enough budget. So um, what I'm aiming to say, which I, I guess you already can deduce, is that uh, actually uh, the pandemic made us more creative. 
Why? Because when we've seen each other, uh, when we've seen uh, all of us, uh, our business and our firms in a scenario of a limited resources, and not only of limited resources, but actually when the traditional ways of handling things became unavailable, uh, we were forced to turn on our imagination and to look for alternatives that would help us to achieve at least the same result, but in a different way. And very often this different way is less costly. So, um, this would be actually one of the aspects, I would say, that in, in the last for more, that we can achieve the same or even more, just, uh, you know, thinking out of the box. And not always you need a big budget for achieving the same things. Another aspect is that I think when we've seen all of us, uh, all of the industries, all of the businesses have seen themselves in this scenario. So this actually made us more open-minded because we started to look into other businesses and other uh, industries to see what are the solutions they are adopting there. Can I copy this solution to my business? Maybe there is something useful for me and I can adopt it to the law industry because often we think, no, law industry is very different. What they do in sales is not for me or what they do in other industry is, is not going to work for me. But I think in pandemic, when all of us got restricted in certain way, we started actually to be more open-minded and see, so, okay, maybe I can adjust here, adjust there, copy from this, copy from that. And I'm gonna give you a very small example of a conversation I had with a colleague in Sweden. And she explained that her office during the quarantine uh, actually decided to cut the rental space uh, and to cut the actual amount of desks because they've adopted a policy of a clean desk. So uh, since uh, partially people were still work working remotely, they decided we don't, we don't really need that many desks. So let's work in a way like other industries, some of other industries work because it's a principle of a hot desk or co-working kind of style, right? So they cut the number of desks. At the end of the day, you pick up all, all your things and you leave the desk clean. So if someone is tired of working from home and wants or needs to visit the office, he can take any desk he likes. So again, this I think is a solution that comes from other industries because in a traditional way of thinking, we would say, no, this is not gonna work for me because I'm a lawyer, I need all my papers, I need you know, all my archives, stored here and there. But again, pandemic made us more open-minded and more creative. And I think it's proven that you not only can live with less spending, but you also can work with less spending. So that, that would be my, uh, <laughs> my lessons from the pandemic. Thank you, Zora. So it sounds like, you know, lawyers can be creative and even if they drink at home and not go into the conference. So I think it's important part uh, I fully agree. Uh, next speaker is Avaldas Rapolas. Avaldas represents quite famous Baltic firm uh, Magnusson, and he will be talking about finance and cost management lesson. Please, Avaldas. Okay, uh, thanks a lot. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to say that it's very interesting to to listen to other lessons, and especially to Zoya. I think that we need to to uh, to enhance our creativity here. So I would like to talk about more more uh, more realistic issue. Uh, it's fine. It's finance management. So uh, what we did uh, during this crisis, and uh, what le what lesson we we use uh, even now. So uh, when we talk about finance management, we have two elements. It's a uh, uh, one, we speak about income, uh, it means our clients, and other is, is that we speak about costs, uh, where we spend our money. So, uh, when the crisis started, and uh, it started very suddenly, it was uh, middle of the, of, of the March, and from, uh, from Monday, uh, a lot of businesses were closed, so uh, what we did, uh, we put our clients into groups. 
So uh, we, we can call it ABC or one, two, three, or red, yellow, green. So um, our green clients were those uh, whose business uh, was not um, affected by, by COVID. Uh, yellow clients, uh, they, uh, they were those uh, whose business was uh, affected, uh, uh, but they were quite f uh, financially stable and could even buy more our services. And the other group was red, whose business was affected and their uh, financial stability was quite, quite uh, weak. So and our, uh, our main target was clients in, in, in yellow group. It means uh, these clients uh, who faced a lot of problems regarding COVID, but uh, who's, uh, who had a lot of money. So I could tell that our, uh, our income in March was, I think, um, yeah, maybe not maximum uh, we could expect, but it was comparing to previous years, it was very, very good months. It means that we, that we focused on, on these clients uh, who had problems. Uh, they didn't know how to deal with these problems and they had enough money and a lot of fear. Uh, and they were even eager to spend this money to get answers. So uh, that's helped us to keep our income uh, even at the level uh, comparing, uh, at the same level uh, comparing to 2000, um, 2019. So we keep the same level of income. And the other, Element is costs. Uh, here we also divided our costs. It's um, also ABC or one, two, three. It's a uh, basic cost. Uh, we can't survive without this cost. Uh, There's a group was nice to have and, and the third group was a kind of luxury costs. And we, uh, we made some levels of income. If our income drops, uh, below certain level, uh, we, we need to uh, to reduce certain group of costs. It also included uh, reducing of lawyer salaries. Our lawyers, uh, it also was very clear that if our income drops, certain group of lawyers or certain person of lawyers, uh, they could get reduced salaries for 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 a certain period, maybe for three months or for half a year. So, and uh, the most important thing is that uh, this plan was presented to our lawyers. Of course, uh, not the whole plan. Uh, the whole plan was presented to partners and salary partners. And a part of this plan was presented to all lawyers. So everybody knew that if our income drops uh, below a certain level, we could feel some consequences. So uh, the whole result out of this, that everybody wanted to earn as much as possible to earn each euro. So we kept this, uh, the same level of income. Our cost, of course, was uh, well lower. So our financial result is much better than in previous year. Uh, year. So that's our lesson and, and we keep still this plan. Thank you, thank you, Ayodis. It seems that uh, actually you are quite creative, in spite of the fact that you said that you need more creativity. Uh -huh. I'm, sure, I'm sure that you know, more you speak to Zoya, more creativity you'll be able to get. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Vlad. Our next speaker is Martin Lewis. Uh, he's a director of Philip Lewis Smith, a very prominent uh, size in uh, London. And Martin will also to, uh, talk about the billing uh, and the uh, modeling of uh, effect of the revised billing to the clients. Uh, thank you, Vlad. Uh, uh, and for the compliments about uh, being prominent in London. In fact, I have a small office of 15 lawyers with a large uh, cross-border practice, but the principles and priorities in this pandemic um, are the same at any scale. Uh, the pandemic has at least confirmed that small firms uh, have a great advantage of being agile and decisions can be made and implemented instantly. 
Now, my first fear in March was that everyone in the economy as a whole would stop or delay paying their bills and that the economy would have some sort of short-term heart attack and that that would cause cash flow problems from September. As our costs are already very tightly managed, I therefore concentrated above all other things on actively managing uh, inward cash flow. And the four simple points that I concentrated on uh, in this regard uh, were as touched upon uh, by uh, two of the previous speakers, uh, but which I reduced to one, analyze even more closely than usual with each individual fee adder, uh, directly what can be billed and when, and modeling the anticipated effect in a revised budget and then closely and actively managing that as a new emergency work and billing plan and so follow and monetize real immediate current work trends. Uh, two, don't distract staff with pointless internal Zoom team meetings and communicate individually. Zoom meetings can be sand rather than oil in the wheels of a business. And one of the outcomes of this uh, pandemic, I hope, will be fewer meetings generally, uh, both internally uh, uh, <coughs> and in discharging business. The third <coughs> point is that in larger firms, the simple approach also assists in identifying um, unconscious fee building where it happens and which will cause trouble with client relationships later, uh, which is a risk as junior staff try to unconsciously uh, keep their recorded hours high so that they're not a, a target uh, for redundancy. Uh, at the same time, you find out who is really busy and who is good at looking busy, and which is sometimes uh, surprising. Uh, the fourth uh, point is uh, manage holiday entitlements carefully so that the staff do not all uh, take holiday in blocks together when everyone is back. So overall, the whole experience has confirmed to me how important it is to keep everything as simple as possible and including not running a small firm on borrowed money uh, to pay bills by return regardless of payment terms and so that the accounting is at all times robust and real. And those are my simple points, Vlad. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. You sound like a German lawyer or a financial manager from that point of view. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm absolutely sure that, you know, uh, it's, it's actually it's very valid from even, I think, ours operation, in spite of the fact that we are not on the island. Uh, and I'm sure that, you know, all of these things are actually things that we definitely uh, will be able to implement in our experience. Thank you for, the, for sharing this. Well, I just make uh, one additional comment, uh, if I may, Vlad, and that is that the ability to respond immediately means that you can deal with the unexpected, as another other speaker uh, uh, has said. We expected uh, property work uh, to uh, fall substantially. It's done the opposite. We expected wills and succession work to increase as people ordered their affairs. That didn't happen. Uh, transactional corporate work has fallen uh, off a cliff, uh, but lending and security work uh, has uh, uh, businesses, uh, uh, you know, put in place uh, facilities uh, has also increased enormously. And I wouldn't have been able to predict the proportions that that happens in uh, without collecting and responding to immediate, um, you know, financial information. That's Thank it. You. Thank you, Martin. Our next speaker is Tomasz Wardynski. Tomasz is one of, uh, one of the most famous Polish lawyers and he is a uh, managing partner of the Wardinsky and partner firms. Tomasz. Tomasz, we can't hear you. Can you unmute, unmute myself, yourself? Yes, I can. I, Thank I, you. I... Thank you very much, uh, Vlad, for inviting me. Uh, it's always nice to see each other uh, and somehow uh, brings nostalgic uh, emotions. Uh, and I hope we shall meet soon uh, face to face uh, rather than uh, computer to computer. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm, uh, I've announced to you that I'm trying to uh, tackle with the problem of, of uh, cash flows, which in fact uh, uh, covers the same area which already was covered by Martin and Evaldas, but maybe 
Uh, what I shall try to do is to recap uh, being inspired by Norman pictures, which were shown at the very beginning of our meeting and which I liked a lot. Uh, when it comes to a law firm, I always uh, somehow make parallels to the sailing. And in fact, whatever you do in life, you can somehow compare to sailing. And especially when you want to get somewhere, because um, in a way, uh, uh, you, you have to uh, fiddle with uh, uh, certain factors which are always limited uh, in numbers, uh, uh, but uh, constantly changing. Now, uh, so if ever we could imagine our law firm as a boat, I think uh, cash flow certainly is the wind and uh, the volume of expenses uh, is a sail. So uh, when you somehow face the storm, which uh, under certain circumstances can be considered uh, as a force majeure event, uh, you have to, in a way, reef your sail. Uh, so you have to cut down uh, on the expenses, because uh, if you will not, uh, very quickly you will be out of the cash flows and then <coughs> the tragedy comes very <coughs> quickly. So, in fact, uh, the, the biggest uh, element of the cost of every law firm are <coughs> lawyers' salaries. Uh, obviously, uh, equity partners, they have to be aware that uh, uh, th th they will have to be prepared to, I would say, put uh, cash uh, in the case of emergency. Uh, and uh, lawyers, uh, they have to be aware that force majeure events touches everyone. Everyone is affected. So it is not only that the partners will have to be putting cash flows, but they have to be prepared, lawyers, they have to be prepared that their salaries may be subject to cuts as well. Now, uh, nobody likes to be told that uh, either there will be a necessity of putting money or uh, there will be a need of cutting uh, on their salaries. So I think that psychological uh, uh, challenge here is the most difficult. People, they have to be aware of the, of, the, of the seriousness of the situation and they have to be aware that there are costs which are to be borne by everyone if ever we are to somehow maintain uh, uh, our vehicle, our, our boat intact and uh, seaworthy. Uh, so in a way, uh, the, the biggest challenge for managing partner was to, I would say, negotiate, uh, renegotiate the contracts and uh, introduce uh, provisions which would enable the management of the company to cut down the salaries by 50% if needed. Obviously, you have to explain to people that uh, uh, it is nothing else than the management of the cash flows and uh, had the uh, 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 situation permitted, obviously the cuts will not be 50% but less or uh, not at all. And if ever there will be cuts uh, in the periods where I would say cash flows will permit, uh, the money will be reimbursed. Uh, the whole of the situation was quite uh, tense in the firm and people, they didn't like it. So, uh, but, but nevertheless, we had to do it. I mean, from the perspective of time today, we may say that our legal businesses were probably the least touched by the pandemics. And uh, I mean, some uh, of our friends already said that they have never ever experienced the better business year in their lives. But <laughs> uh, certainly the, the stress was there and uh, uh, I, I think that the challenge was much more uh, uh, psychology than uh, uh, the real danger of uh, cuts and, and, uh, and lack of the cash flows. 
So finally, mm, uh, I have to say that uh, 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 overall, I mean, we have lost two people who left the firm and so much the better, but the whole of the team showed a sense of responsibility and a sense of uh, 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 their civic uh, society spirit uh, within the law firm, which I think uh, uh, is, um, uh, is very valuable. Uh, the bonds between us today are much stronger than uh, they have been before. Uh, what I have to say is that we don't, we are not that much afraid of pandemic anymore. And I think that uh, 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 the cut down on energy uh, would be much more dangerous. And this can uh, also happen. Uh, if, have a, if have a things they may turn out badly in the world that we are living now in. So, uh, um, so far, uh, so good. Uh, we have to remain optimistic uh, and we have to uh, remember that the biggest challenge uh, uh, which we always face in uh, 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 the situation when we meet the unexpected circumstances are psychological challenges, not the physical ones. Thank you, Tomas. And I think it's really important that we, as lawyers we have to face the reality and to be able to respond to the reality. I think that's one of the very significant lessons we learned over this time. Our next speaker is Evgenia Bandarenka, who represents very, not very well established and uh, very helpful from from, from point of IBA from your consult, use consult. And Evgenia will be actually talking about agricultural issue, right, Evgenia? It's about cows. Yeah, and magic. <laughs> Thank you, Vlad, for inviting me. Um, if I use, if I use the terms of a Boston Matrix, I will say something like: find your cow, clean, feed it, and care of it. But uh, if I use the common language, I will say: uh, find the products and the type of clients which make your main budget. Uh, the pandemic is a very good test, uh, as say Evgeny, and it's a very good test uh, for all of our life and also for our product plan. Uh, so we can realize our products uh, even in such extreme conditions. Uh, if they give uh, a well-paid job or not. And we are lawyers, we are so ambitious and we mostly like to write on the horse, uh, especially Arabian horse. Uh, it also call um, like rising stars in the Boston Matrix language. But they can easily forget about the cow which give us real food. Uh, so there is no time for ducks or troubled child. Uh, we should invest uh, our time and pay our attention mostly to the cow and uh, a little bit to rising stars. Uh, and the decision to such question uh, is um, not spent, not waste our time uh, for don't, uh, one decision for all, I, I, I guess it's the main decision uh, and the main lesson from pandemic, don't waste your time. Uh, on such things that you, there is no need to do it. And so if we are talking about um, product line, uh, we should find uh, the cow, uh, we should find breed winners. And how can we do it? Uh, we should analyze uh, our product line, point, cost, incomes, time for all project. Uh, we should choose the cow, describe the client's uh, portrait and take care of them. And we made such exercise uh, during pandemic uh, and we try to choose this cow. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's not agricultural, it's like in Boston Matrix, <laughs> you see. Uh, and uh, it's like a magic. Uh, when you are focused on something, uh, it became grow and develop. And it's main um, purpose uh, in such thing. So the lesson is don't waste our time and your time uh, on any product which you are interested yourself, but find your cow 
and find the client and take care of it and go forward. So I will be optimistic and very short <laughs> in such thank a case. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, thank you again. And, and I, I think see the result of such, uh, such uh, recognition. Yeah. And I think no. it's, it's extremely important, you know, A, to stay focused and be optimistic. I fully, I fully agree with you because otherwise, you know, one of the ingredients leaves lost, and, you know, then it will not help. Uh, I will actually make a small switch in our agenda because uh, Borislav will be required to leave us at, at four o'clock. So I would like to give time to Borislav Bayanov, manager partner of Borislav of Bayanov and Core uh, from Bulgaria, Sofia. Thank you very much, Vlad. Uh, it's uh, honor and pleasure, of course, to be with such uh, distinguished friends. Uh, I, I don't know why from, for the last few days uh, in my uh, brain, uh, there is one song, How Fragile We Are. And maybe this is uh, one of the conclusions after these six months or seven months of uh, pandemic. Uh, I, I fully agree that uh, it's quite good for us to have time to think, uh, maybe to rediscover the values in a profession, but also in personal life. Uh, I value it very much. We, of course, like the others, decided to do better than before. Uh, of course, many people uh, started to like to stay at home. Uh, when we uh, discuss uh, whether we should go back uh, and they say, uh, what's the meaning? Uh, why we should go back, uh, especially if you have a nice house and uh, garden and something else, uh, it's pretty nice. But uh, in fact, we did uh, many things the last few months. Uh, for the last three years, we do Academy for Partners, which uh, is aimed to educate uh, uh, our clients, uh, GCs and CEOs of uh, our clients on uh, hot legal topics. And what we did after the pandemic, we started to provide these uh, uh, seminars, lectures, whatever you call them, uh, online. Uh, before we did it once per month, now we started every two weeks and there is a big interest. It's very nice. And uh, so every two weeks we do for clients, the next week we do for uh, our own lawyers. So it works pretty well. We also organize ourselves to improve the digitalization. Uh, we realize that that's uh, the business which is booming. So uh, from one part, we have uh, various clients from this uh, sector, uh, multinationals and locals, but at the same time, we, we try to improve ourselves, our ERP system, we, we are moving to the cloud, uh, uh, we introduce new intranet uh, as a platform for communications within the firm. Uh, we are working on a project to provide uh, another platform uh, where we could communicate with clients uh, like uh, all the big firms uh, they have. Uh, so we, we uh, try to catch the time because it's moving faster and faster. And uh, we see that uh, our clients are uh, new in their demands because uh, if they have two clicks uh, on their computer, they could receive at home certain uh, products or services. So they have the same attitude towards us. So we're working hard on it. But uh, we are grateful to God for this opportunity. I think uh, we all, uh, the, all of the human beings, we should make important conclusions coming out of this pandemic. And what? thank you once again for inviting me for this. Thank you. Thank you, Vereslav. Uh, and it's quite important that, you know, finally lawyers start thinking about digitalization. I think that, you know, we're always a bit kind of not afraid, but we're always kind of a bit ignorant. We believe that we survive without it. And now I think you are completely right. It's time to face the reality. The reality is now quite different and digitalization is the next step of our development. And it's good that you know, we are able to have this time and to make this decision to go ahead. We are getting back uh, to our uh, schedule and the next speaker is probably one of the best known English lawyer in the world, uh, Rupert Botswell. Rupert represents the company RPC London and he is responsible, I believe, for the whole world in this company. So it would be extremely important to know uh, his, his experience and his lesson from this pandemic time. Thank you, Vlad. 
Uh, it's good to speak to you from London. In terms of satisfying clients, of course, the key was would everything work and would, could we just do the job? 75% of my firm is litigation and arbitration in London, Hong Kong, Singapore. And we depended completely on whether the civil court would ensure that cases could carry on. And we were very lucky that the court uh, in England uh, and Singapore uh, was extraordinarily impressive in really not missing a beat in carrying on. In Hong Kong, it was a bit uh, slower, uh, candidly, to um, work things out and, and uh, that, but that took time to come through. And in terms of working with Russian clients, I had a trial in June, a full trial um, in the English court that happened remotely. We had evidence given remotely um, from Moscow as well as from other places. And it was almost easier to have the trial remotely than in person, bizarrely. Uh, we have had uh, other cases that have gone ahead in person with people sitting you know, distances apart um, uh, and including appeal uh, cases as well as arbitration cases. So, I mean, if ultimately you're, we're here to handle clients by doing what they need to be done, then we have been lucky, and I'm, I'm not saying England's alone in this, of course, all over the world, that this has been achieved. Uh, but Let's, let's be frank, it was a very nervous, uncertain moment whether uh, things would be able to carry on. Uh, it hasn't been the same with the criminal courts. It's been much more difficult with juries um, and people needing to be you know, physically present and moved around. So our white collar crime practice and our tax disputes practice that's had more of a criminal side to it uh, has uh, been, uh, been uh, slower and more difficult. I would say with client relationships, there has been a lot more candor and openness and, and personal revelation, not just of um, what, what sits behind you when you're uh, speaking from home on Zoom, but a candor of what people kind of really need and how you can really help and a collective sense of purpose. Uh, I, as well as doing lots of disputes, I, I have a whole history with art deals and um, I found it was fascinating seeing art move around the world. Basically, Monet's, Manet's and Picasso's are treated as cash uh, by certain people and as long as they're in the catalogue resonate, people don't feel the need to physically see them and will you know, change hands for pretty significant sums of money. Also, commodity, certain you know, rare commodities I saw being dealt um, and I just found people were a lot more open and, and proactive in, in their conversations. Uh, so although at the same time, I typically travel a lot um, and I have found it frustrating not being able to meet clients in person abroad because there are things that people won't say on Zoom or Signal or Telegram or Threema or I mean, one loses count, I don't know. I mean, part of my, my biggest problem often is just on my machine, just going through all the different apps um, of, of, of where are people messaging me from. Um, and so that has been frustrating. I've been coming to London. I live outside London much more regularly in the last sort of six weeks because I find that there, are, there is a thirst to meet people. Uh, I was in Istanbul two weeks ago for a week seeing uh, various Turkish um, clients uh, who we're helping. And I, I actually think we will go back to something that wasn't that far different to what it was before the pandemic personally. Um, and I think we ought to, um, because human beings need to be with each other, see each other, feel each other. Chemist personal chemistry is the most wonderful thing about being human and the irrationality of people who you think you should like who you don't like and people who you think you won't like, who you do like. This comes around from spending time with people and I think the human condition requires um, people to, to be together. And I, I, I actually think all, all the pandemic will do is give people a sense of the flexibility of what technology can add to the mix of human relationships. But um, I, I'm, a, I'm a small C conservative in what I think will come out of this. Uh, so I, I feel that actually um, we have been able as a profession globally to help 
and handle clients well. Um, we're very lucky that the technology uh, ha has achieved that. Um, and so I think uh, we, we have to thank that as well as um, all of the, the people who've come together to deliver for clients. Thank you, Vlad. Thank you, Rupert. So it sounds like, you know, in spite of the fact that we are remote from our clients at the moment, we still love it. And there is a possibility to still keep good connection with them, even in this situation. And I fully agree from that perspective. And I think that, you know, we will be required to find, you know, and to experience different ways to deal with our clients, especially, you know, in the new uh, circumstances. And the world is going to keep to some extent like this for some period of time. So we still need to get, get in touch and keep in touch with our clients and to be able to help them irrespective of this. Our next speaker is uh, Safiya Zhilkaidarova, managing partner of Signum Law Firm from Kazakhstan. And uh, we had a very interesting discussion last year with Safiya in, uh, in, in Korea about, you know, emotional intellect and system of communications and Safiya decided to talk about adaptive management and the way how law firm communicates uh, within the firms. Thank you, Sophia. Please. Ah, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me well? Let me welcome all today's distinguished speakers. I'm very honored to be with you here today. Special thanks to Vlad and Ludmila for arranging this new style online remote event <laughs> so efficiently. So coming to my topic, I would say that, uh, sorry, do you hear this echo, no? A bit. Yes, sorry, let me. Yeah, I guess you are using okay, two sorry. devices. Yeah, I do, but I switched on the... Uh, yeah, but go ahead, it's, it's fine now. One of them, okay. So coming back to my topic, I would say that COVID era remote working or working from home became a very real trend today and for the lawyers uh, across the globe. As a result, there are lots of us who found ourselves suddenly managing the completely remote teams. Working online is not something which, which is entirely new for us because we used to travel a lot and we used to work online. But when whole team being unable to be physically present in the office for several months is quite challenging. Even honestly saying that it's, it was very scary uh, and it, as it is very much opposite to what I have used to in my daily life. And bigger shock set by the fact that Mr. Uh, or Mrs. Corona did not give us the prior notice uh, and everything was very shocking speaking frankly, uh, in the beginning, uh, in, the, in the middle of March. Obviously, as all my previous speakers said and will say, we also had our crisis management plan with town hall, acknowledging the fact of the crisis, sharing actions which we are going to implement to entire team. So we reconstructed and remodeled all the established and how to say cemented processes starting from IT and finance and finishing with HR and marketing. So we got um, today also thanks to everyone insights on digitalization and cost and income management and work and life balance. And I would like to share the learnings and tips on adapting your communication styles within and outside the firm. So the fact that communication is, um, the effective communication is 99 and 9% of success in everything we do is not a secret, yeah? yeah? For the project, for the processes, for the strategies to be successfully implemented, the communication is the, the only and uh, the very essential part uh, of success. So what has changed in communication inside and outside the firm? Um, everything has been changed. So the communication channels changed, forms, methods, types, language, etc. So as we are talking about lessons to learn, and I have I'm, and I'm limited by two minutes, let me quickly go through the tips I have prepared, which really helped me personally to keep my lawyers motivated and my clients engaged um, and kept with us. So uh, number one is do regular check-ins, check-ins with uh, be it in town halls, 
be it with yours, your practice te teams, or with the clients. So if we had before the chance to physically see each other and feel each other every day in the office, now it's impossible. So the must now is regular check-in, advisable every day, one-to-one, one-on-one, face-to-face via video messengers or other, other means. And uh, the important thing was that team needs to see you and you need to see them. It's a kind of giving them the sense of uh, feeling of the, uh, of the for them giving, giving certain feeling of certainty and uh, giving them more kind of, how to say, energy and power, yeah. So, and um, weekly meetings in the office, when it's possible, we are doing it and it brings also back uh, all the quiet energy and sparks in their eyes. So clients' communication also went beyond the routine and usual BD channels, let's say. We send them caring notes, we send them small caring sets, or made online quizzes, um, had several webinars on soft skills and yoga classes. And what I noted, this individual approach and personal approach made the relations with some clients uh, much warmer and much more closer. So next, my learning is that uh, we have to communicate, especially those who are partners and who are managing people, we have to communicate more to decrease the loneliness and isolation. Because what researchers say that the level of anxiety and depression in professional environment increased substantially during the uncertain and strange times. I'm happy for Evgeny Zhilin that in his philosophical approach to life, and uh, unfortunately it happens maybe to more mature words, so those are having the stable rules in life. But with followers for associates, it's very, I would find it you know, very important to stay connected with them and communicate as much as possible with them. So manage expectations and accept the reality. This was one of the learnings for me as well, because it's like, it was an eye-opening for me, make realistic expectations. And so they should be very clear in terms of scope, in terms of deadline, in terms of who is involved in the process and what are the delivery, deliveries and in which forms and when are required. So in the office, it's much easier to do physically because they learn by example, they see the real life coaching uh, example, but, but when it's remotely done, uh, it's an effect of someone looking at someone and wondering what others are doing. Uh, this is very uh, important learning for me was focus on outcomes and not activity. While before in our KPIs, we had kind of BD events or certain lunches. Okay, I'm sorry, um, we're a bit kind of, you know, uh, on the on the shorter notice, but we need to kind of be, be a bit faster. Sorry, one minute. Uh, not one minute, even 20 seconds. The most important is uh, very much reflects what um, uh, my Ukrainian colleague said, being resilient and flexible, yeah? To trust more to your team and give them freedom and flexibility to work whenever they want. I got used to receive emails at four in the morning, at nine in the morning, or myself sending WhatsApps in, in 1 a.m. when my kind of what I think nice idea came to my mind. So in the long run, it's nice because people became more adapted, more flexible, more resilient, and I'm happy with the way we are now uh, managing this situation. Thank you, Sophia. Thank and you. I think, you know, to keep communication is extremely important. And I fully agree that that's, you know, keep people kind of engaged and involved. Uh, our next speaker is Dmitry Simoshka from uh, Stepanovsky Papakulin Partners Law Firm in Belarus. And please, Dmitry, accept now our deepest um, congratulations, right, with the, with the new president. But, you know, I hope that you, uh, your lessons that you learned you over this period of time were not only connected with this, you know, disastrous political situation and in uh, Belarus, but also with the legal issues. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uh, 
Allah. So continuing Sophia's line, Sophia's topic, I would like I would like to touch the mental health topic. And this this topic appeared uh, several years ago in UK uh, and the US based law firm practice. And frankly speaking, we wouldn't expect it to appear so rapidly in Belarus, but quote unquote two fa two factor two catalysts uh, helped. Uh, for us, it, it was uh, it were COVID and uh, our uh, faked election. Sorry for my uh, comment. So, uh, as we all know, the lawyers is uh, a lawyer uh, is a main law firm asset. So, the question we faced in our law firm, in particular, on the one hand, how to support the team members in their struggling with the wellness and the uh, mental health during this COVID crisis, as well as uh, how to strengthen our corporate culture and uh, uh, the team, team management itself. So isolation and social distancing caused this stress, anxiety and frustration to our team. And for sure it's uh, harshly affected the team productivity. So therefore, uh, we decided to, to create and maintain the social connections, especially for the junior team members, because the older ones uh, used to have uh, the strong, strong team culture and, uh, and the connections. So it's, uh, it's their homes, uh, the people, lawyers were stuck not only with their spouses and kids, but uh, also with their fears and problems and someone faced even existential crisis. So uh, general meetings via Zoom, Teams, et cetera, et cetera, wouldn't be able to fix it, unfortunately. And people need to be heard and exchange warm feelings, share thoughts. So uh, what's the way out we found was the organizing in-person strategic sessions. So uh, for sure it was, uh, uh, with all the preventive measures uh, and uh, following several online sessions for sure. And it was uh, led by the well-known uh, psychologist experience with the military conf conflict survivors recovery. So it was an uh, amazing experience in several brainstorming sessions. Uh, our team tried to find the deep internal uh, fundamental values that matching uh, with the corporate culture and the uh, uh, corporate strategy. How we do this, uh, how we did this, it was the, the people, uh, people showed and uh, their uh, used power stories. So uh, after, after some of them, we volunteered. So two in one, the therapy and team building event resulted in the energy bust and uh, it's directly affected the productivity and spirit growth. So uh, as I, uh, as I uh, mentioned before, uh, we have to consider that the lawyer, the lawyer is the main law firm asset and we have to match their supporting, supporting actions with the strengthening the cultural, uh, cultural events and uh, uh, strengthening our team itself. So thanks. Thank you, Dmitry. Good luck with all the other changes that you are going to see in the next, you know, couple of months. Hope, you know, all of them would be positive. And I fully agree that, you know, it's very important to keep up, you know, uh, motivation and good, good feelings inside of the people and, you know, to see some kind of bright future, even, you know, the current situation may be offering relatively hard, uh, hard kind of facts. Thank you so much for your support. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, Dmitry. Uh, our next speaker is Timur Agaev, and we're a bit back to digitalization and uh, legal world and IT world. Timur, what's your, what's your lesson during this time? Well, uh, first, hello, everybody. Vlad. Thank you uh, so much for inviting me uh, to this uh, very interesting conference. There are a lot of uh, interesting topics. Uh, well, there have been already several words uh, told about uh, digital era and the use of uh, special technologies. Um, uh, we were certainly faced with uh, the same problematic uh, because we had to reply for the demand emanating from uh, our clients uh, who had uh, several concerns 
in the very, very beginning of uh, COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, the concerns were, um, some of the clients were really concerned about the potential fa fate of their projects. So how can you uh, uh, process to negotiation, how uh, you will organize the closing, uh, what will happen uh, to uh, the uh, their projects uh, implying the new investors? Uh, because uh, just for many clients, we used to organize uh, the meetings uh, in our conference uh, room at our law firm or to uh, assist at the real physical meetings where persons uh, may uh, discuss all the issues face to face. That was the first concern. The second concern, uh, some of uh, the clients have already used all the uh, known, well-known uh, platforms and technologies, but uh, the pandemia coincided with the uh, quite famous leaks of uh, personal uh, information uh, from uh, one of the uh, well-known uh, platform. And so many clients were uh, very concerned about the confidentiality, about the protection of uh, their personal uh, data. Um, it happened that uh, it just be before the uh, lockdown, we have already started the negotiating with one of uh, our clients who is a Germany-based uh, IT company, which elaborated a solution uh, designed especially for consulting business which uh, has a particular, with a focus of particular attention to the confidentiality, the protection of the data. So the company is uh, certified and uh, responsible for uh, all the, uh, the protection of all the data of the clients. And uh, the pandemic uh, situation just speeded up our negotiations because we took the decision that we take this uh, solution and that uh, we will just uh, require from this company to adapt this solution to our particular needs, to uh, add some other languages, uh, to add uh, some tools that uh, helps us to not only organize the uh, video conferences with uh, multiple participants, but also to share the documents at the same time, to work on the documents, and to proceed to the signature to the uh, put the tariffs on the documents. So like this, introducing these IT solutions, we could uh, reply to the demand and to say to all our clients, uh, guys, don't be afraid. We will organize the meetings, probably not physical meetings, but uh, video meetings with your investors. Uh, you will proceed to negotiations with them everything will be uh, will happen as uh, as you ha have planned so your projects will not be dropped down and now you are also maybe assured with respect to the protection of your personal uh, data because we choose uh, the company we work not with the publicly available free platforms but we work with a particular firm which guarantees to us and which has a, an insurance of uh, professional uh, responsibility towards uh, us and uh, towards our client. So it uh, uh, counts down the clients. They are more, I would say, more in comfort uh, with respect to all these uh, quite sensitive issues. So I think that this uh, kind of uh, reaction may uh, help the lawyers and consultants generally begins to keep their clients and uh, to uh, even to go uh, further to uh, attract new clients because you have some competitive uh, qualities uh, compared to other uh, players on the legal market uh, which uh, didn't do so. That's all. That's, that's our experience. Thank you, Timur. It's going to be quite interesting. I mean, unless you don't want to share your competitive advantage, just to know what kind of platform you are, going, you are using, because I think uh, this is one of the major issues in the security uh, in the current world, because we all know that Zoom wasn't kind of, you know, protected enough, especially at the initial stage, and this kind of, you know, things 
uh, specialists specifying specifically applying to our profession would be in very big demand quite shortly. But thank you. And in case you decide to share, I think we'll be happy, you know, to to, to give this information to all the participants. Our next speaker is Vasily Rodemino. I will just reply to your question. Uh, we'll be happy to give the, the name of the company, Sync Pilot, and the solution is a leave contract. I'm happy to do so because they will have uh, probably more clients, uh, so we will be able to augment our fees. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you, Timur. Our next speaker is uh, Vasily Rodemino, who is, uh, who does need to be introduced. He is senior partner of Alrud, probably uh, one of the most famous Russian law firms. And Vasily would be talking about security and his view how to, uh, how to learn from this situation and how to improve the security of the firm. Vasily, please. Vasily, we can't hear you. Thank you, Vladislav. And first of all, thank you for inviting me to speak at this event. And I'm also very glad to see a lot of familiar faces uh, whom I'm missing a lot. Uh, I would like to, to follow on what uh, Timur has just been saying about uh, security. Security in uh, the situation which we were facing, uh, facing in March, beginning of the pandemic, was actually concentrated around people. So the first, the first security issues which we had and the, first, the priority for us was of course our people and uh, we were focusing on finding a way how we can make sure that they will stay not, not affected by, uh, by the pandemic, safe at home, etc. So we moved on the 18th of March, we moved to the complete uh, work from home mode Things got, we were very, quite well prepared. We had uh, notebooks practically for all our people, including trainees from the universities. So that went quite, quite well. The physical well-being of our lawyers and partners uh, and our uh, back office staff has been insured. And I think we haven't had practically, I mean, we had a couple of COVID cases among our employees, but that was not anyhow related to, to, to our office. But what happened next is actually partners of the firm were very concerned about the security of our clients. We, the next day our people moved home uh, and started working from home. And that, that was, to, to say at the very beginning, that was a very efficient, We've been working very good. We have performed all our obligations towards the clients. Our uh, revenues uh, were stable and uh, uh, stable, and we are quite busy. We are not concerned here about the, let's say, our performance. What we are concerned, we are concerned about security. Uh, we have a variety of people in our in our office with age starting from 25, finishing with pro probably uh, 65. And these people are living in a different home conditions. They're living in different part of Moscow, sometimes outside of Moscow. And uh, we don't know what are the working conditions they have. Do they have a separate room? Are they sharing the same table with husband or brother or sister? We don't know. We don't know what is, what is the quality of their internet um, uh, uh, connection. We, we don't know whether they are staying the same place the whole time or they're moving from place to place. They're taking no care of them. We've been, uh, we've been fascinating with all those issues. We tried to introduce some, let's say, rules and deliver those rules to our people, making sure that they understand that, that they shouldn't compromise the security of our clients. The first and the most important, of course, is the confidentiality, confidentiality of the correspondence which were undertaking with the clients, confidentiality of the things on which we were working, confidentiality of the conversations which we are, uh, we are, uh, we are organizing. Uh, I heard someone saying that at the beginning, Zoom was not very, 
uh, very um, well uh, secured? Yes, but if you have five uh, participants in the Zoom conference call, you can imagine that each of those participants sitting at home probably can have three, four, or even more people who may hear what is actually discussed during during these uh, those calls. Uh, all that is a big challenge for law firm, and that is one of the reasons we believe and the lesson we learn that uh, our profession most pro probably uh, will stay in the offices and we're not planning to reduce the, the size of our office and as soon as, as the, the situation will permit we will uh, all return to the office making sure that our, uh, our clients uh, interests are well pro uh, 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 protected. In addition to the, all those risks, which I have just uh, uh, summarized to, to you, we have also noticed that uh, mm, uh, the computer systems in general and our computer system uh, has been uh, attacked much more often during the pandemic than before. And that is also an, an interesting, uh, an interesting um, how to say, angle of this uh, uh, discussion. That actually means that there are quite a lot of people who are trying to use this special uh, situation in order to hack our computer the computers and get information in order to make uh, money uh, on, on, on that. And another one separate area is of course documents and original documents. How people, how our employees are destroying the documents if they're printing them at home, how they do you actually with that with originals all that is not touched what i think we need to do uh in russia but i think it's maybe uh iba should also think uh, think about that we need to uh, develop uh, uh, additions to the different regulations which we have for lawyers and for advocates to make sure that that those uh situation and those issues of working from home are actually addressed to the benefit of our clients. That's Thank you, Vasily. Thank you, Vasily. It sounds very strategic, so I hope that you are happy during the event because, you know, we remember what Evgeny said in the beginning. You have to be kind of philosophical in order to be happy uh, and vice versa. So I'm sure that, you know, the, the, the definition of security would be completely different within a very short period of time. And I fully agree that it's coming from personal security to the IT security and of course to the client security and the end of the story, but in a different angle at the moment. Uh, we have two more speakers, guys, and we need to kind of, you know, still to do this. Uh, uh, I would like to give time to Igor Noskov, who is a good friend of mine, and he was a uh, very well known and recognizable lawyer in St. Petersburg, and now he is most located in London. So, Igor, what moves you to London? Uh, yeah, thank you a lot. Thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, uh, I mean the same. Uh, I guess uh, the same reasons uh, as yourself. So, like uh, the Russian biggest business is leaking actually from Russia. I mean the most, uh, the I mean uh, the biggest uh, set owners, the high nets. So they've been constantly uh, leaving Russia for the last uh, twenty years, and uh, now we still have few who actually in process. So and uh, lawyers usually migrating with their client as uh, you know the birds so that's why i'm here and i kind of uh, stuck in here for six months as and now every like even single visit um, uh, to russia would cost me two weeks in quarantine that's why i usually travel now to istanbul which is uh, uh, ironically the only place where both russians and uh, british residents can go without sitting in quarantine after so uh, this is one of the uh, interesting results of uh, pandemia here and regarding uh, pandemic lessons, uh, since a lot of uh, speakers already mentioned uh, the results, which probably affected uh, all law firms and uh, ourselves, um, such as digitalization, talking through Zoom and uh, you know Skype. Uh, so, to the most like um, pandemic. Uh, lesson for myself was that uh, thank you to this quarantine and pandemia 
uh, we realized who were the witlings in the firm who were mentally ill or over emotional or just uh, irreasonable and who were spreading stupid rumors about a virus through corporate emails or uh, WhatsApp group. And uh, now we are immune from those people, which I think is a great result because we wouldn't have known who would be that difficult without uh, this really uh, special event, as pandemia. So that's, I guess, uh, the only uh, original uh, experience I had, which was not mentioned uh, by other speakers. Thank you. I think that that is all from me because uh, it's been a long show and I'm almost at the end of the list, so I just don't want uh, everyone to be too like bored. <laughs> Thank you, Gor. I mean, kind of small additional question to you: Do you see uh, your experience and your lesson in London differs from your uh, from the lesson of your firm in, in uh, Saint Petersburg? I haven't been to Saint Petersburg since the beginning of uh, quarantine, so and uh, my experience was uh, rather. Uh, difficult because I've spent six months with my family in a row, which I never had before and which was like really, really difficult for me. But uh, now, as I said, now I'm traveling to Turkey, so it's much better now. <laughs> in in St. Petersburg, I think they, they could at least, uh, you know, had more freedom than I had here. Good. Thank you. And our last speaker for today is Sergei Vaitishkin, uh, who is managing partner of Baker and McKenzie Moscow. And I think that, you know, the topic Sergei proposed uh, was actually motivating me to kind of to, to give him the, the last word during this event, because that was the most optimistic approach that during this, this, this discussion, I believe. Sergei, please. Thank you, Vlad. Uh, it's a pleasure to speak. And I think everything that has been said before me uh, resonates uh, very well. And it's a very helpful sharing of experience. Uh, uh, for me, uh, this was a very positive experience, although I believe that the crisis uh, is definitely by no means over and we will be able to understand the lessons probably in a year or maybe in a couple of years to, to find out whether uh, our approach was the right one. Uh, but this crisis, for some unknown reason to me, is my favorite out of the five that I've been through. I, I mean, an ideal storm, it, it was sudden. Not that it was not entirely unexpected because I knew something should happen. It was time for adjustment. But I never expected that the government in our major markets will prohibit us and our clients from coming to work for several months. Sort of a man-controlled economic shutdown with unpredictable consequences. I enjoyed the unprecedented level of fear because in previous crisis, it was mostly about economic stress, fear of loss of income. I mean, I wouldn't call this true fear. Uh, this was more about greed. Uh, but this time we have to deal with real fear, fear for life of your loved ones, of your colleagues, of clients, and your own. Uh, and this was a disruption that sort of propelled us uh, into the future, uh, into remote work and uh, massive use of online uh, communications, basically highlighting to me the fact that we do not embrace new technologies quickly enough. Uh, but all this was a very positive experience, which I'm actually enjoying because I look at it as a means to achieve changes that I'm convinced will make our firm and our team better. Because the crisis forced us to take a very hard look at how we operate, uh, at how our teams are constructed, forcing us to part with weaker performers, and this basically opens the door for uh, better talent. Decide if uh, some of the law practices were less successful and they may, must be reorganized. And of course, improve discipline. And uh, despite all the talk about that this crisis is making us more creative, et cetera, et cetera, this is true. But because we are living in such an unpredictable, uh, ambiguous, uh, 
volatile world, uh, I think where we can really improve is on being more disciplined in how we uh, enter time, uh, in how we do billing and collections, uh, in making us take decisions that are necessary much quicker than uh, we normally do uh, in normal circumstances. Uh, and it was also very positive to see that all our partners and lawyers who were stressed by the crisis, how focused they became uh, on client work. If you compare the number of client events uh, that we held during the pandemic uh, and the level of communication we had with clients, uh, this was much higher than, uh, say, in uh, normal times. And of course, this was coupled with the challenge of adapting to new technologies. Uh, so the sudden beginning of the crisis, uh, which is still unfolding, very strikingly demonstrated to me that uh, it's very good and that rather than being depressed about this crisis as sort of I personally used to do uh, for previous times, uh, I think I and my partners should seize the opportunity presented by this crisis to take hard steps that we were hesitant to take previously and do things that will help us adapt to the new market situation as quickly as we can. Uh, and not just to survive, but to become better uh, and improve our service. So the crisis forces us to do more than we would normally do. Uh, and in fact, it's easier to convince partners and get consensus to do the right things. And then it's also easier to get associates on board to implement the decisions that we've made. Uh, I should say, and it's a very important thing that, uh, of course, as lawyers, we are quite conservative and you would hear partners say, well, let's wait, let's see hard figures, let's see several months of data uh, to do the steps that we now know are necessary. I think it's a waste of time to wait for sort of very hard figures and several months of figures to confirm what we already know based on prior experience and we would see in the market. So decision-making and quick decision-making is extremely important. Uh, so I think uh, being positive is also important because you have to take care of yourself and being in good mental and physical shape uh, is another factor that helps you survive. And unless you focus on that in anticipation of, I would think harder times to come by, you won't be successful. So to, to finish, uh, do not miss the opportunities in this crisis, stay positive, uh, get rid of, of the underperformers, downsize inefficient and profitable teams, and then promote your best talent. Because uh, we promoted two equity partners right in the middle of the crisis, because we thought that this will give us a boost uh, when things not really return to normal, but when they start to improve, because that always happens uh, in a crisis. And also, finally, uh, experience shows that uh, our anticipation of how bad the crisis uh, will be always failed us. Things always turn out better uh, than we expected them to be. So thank you very much. Thank you, Sergey. Thank you. It's extremely valuable. And uh, frankly speaking, I'm a bit overwhelmed, I have to admit, because uh, I'm sure that, you know, we all face the circumstances. All of the circumstances were a bit different and very much similar at uh, the same time. And the uh, lessons I learned, at least from today, are so different on one side, but so valid on the other side. So I'm absolutely sure that they actually, not all the lessons we are all going to learn from this crisis and the crisis are still, is still not over. Even more, we all face this uh, and facing our own crisis and you know, they will be as big as COVID and as small as Mr. Lukashenko. But uh, I'm absolutely sure that uh, at the end of the story, the most important part for all of us is actually to understand that crisis are actually a survival tool. They are given to us because in many cases, what we are required to do is to, to be able to understand the reality and to act 
in accordance with the reality. And if we learn this, one of the major lessons probably, I'm absolutely sure that we will be able to survive any crisis, whatever big or whatever small it is. And uh, Brexit would be a possibility, Rupert, not a limitation. <laughs> so I would like to give my uh, thanks, great thanks for all of you guys who were able to share. I'm sure that you know, there will be more lessons we're going to learn and I'm sure that will be more possibilities for us you know, to exchange these views because they are extremely valuable for our life and further developments of our firms. And I would like to thank the audience to stay with us during all this time and not getting asleep. And now I'm getting back the word to Zoya. Thank you. So, well, today we've, we've been talking quite a lot about the insecurities and the challenges that we were struck by during this pandemic. And again, the issues of security have already been touched. Uh, so this is actually a good um, food for thought about what actually determines the security. Is it money? Uh, is it relationship? Uh, is it our partnerships? So this is exactly the topic that we invite everyone to discuss next week. Uh, the topic of security and what determines the security will be moderated by Akko Sorainen, senior partner of Sorainen Law Firm. And again, uh, we thank everyone for joining us weekly. And we, of course, hope to see you next week and share your experience and your thoughts about what is there uh, in the security for our firms and what pandemic taught us about the security. And obviously, if, if you want to listen once more to this uh, seminar, that will be on the YouTube and it's all available. Right. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much for joining and for taking part of this event. Take care. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.